It is important to understand how the expulsion fuse operates. This is a cutaway of the fuse in a normal position. As the fuse element melts inside the refill, an arc is introduced and elongated. The heat decomposes the boric acid creating water vapor and boric antratide. The combination extinguishes the arc by blasting through it and exit from the bottom of the fuse. The gases are usually assisted with interruption process by a spring-loaded mechanical device inside the fuse holder. The exhaust produced during the interruption provides a significant amount of noise. At this point, a previously mentioned suppressor is often used to limit the discharge and noise. There are two types of suppressors, a discharge filter and a condenser. Both facilitate the suppression with different results. We'll examine more details about the suppressors later. Faults that occur using current limiting fuses are handled quite differently than what we saw with expulsion fuses. Current limiting fuses provide effective limitation of fault magnitude and duration with added benefit of quiet and safe operation. At high fault currents, the fuse element instantly melts forming multiple arcs and losing its energy or heat into the surrounding sand. The sand absorbs the heat, melts and forms fulgurite, a glass-like substance. The arc voltage increases to approximately twice the system voltage, forcing the current to zero. Interruption is accomplished without noise or discharge. During a low fault, the current melts the solder drop located in the silver element. The element burns back until there is sufficient gap to interrupt the current in a process commonly known as the M effect. Briefly speaking, the process is a method of diffusing one metal into another to form a new alloy with a lower melting point. 